Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're so excited to talk about Eastern Europe today. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Deborah DeZang and I am the branch manager of our Victoria British Columbia store. I've been in the travel industry for approximately 20 years and with sell off vacations for the past three years. In October 2015, I was lucky enough to travel to Eastern Europe and join a group of other travel agents. Can't believe it's been five years already since we got to go. Uh, we got to see Hungary, Austria, and the Czech Republic. This was an amazing trip, and I look forward to sharing my information with you. Uh, so also joining me today is uh, one of the people who um, actually escorted our trip, uh, Jeff Carpenter from Exotic Journeys. Welcome, Jeff. Uh, did you want to tell our viewers a little bit about yourself? Thanks, Deborah. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, can't believe it's been five years, as you mentioned. Uh, time flies by, but the memories are still so vivid. But no, I've been with Exotic Journeys for 17 years. It's wow. the only career I've had. Uh, it's the only industry I've worked in. I've always had a, a passion for travel. And uh, just so you guys know, we're a tour operator that works very closely with sell off vacations. So whether it's a flight, a hotel, a cruise, um, we work very closely with them. And uh, today we're going to be talking about some of our exotic destinations. So, yes, I was lucky enough uh, to help escort that group uh, five years ago. And uh, we're super excited to be able to share some of those. Uh, memories today and hopefully uh, maybe even give you guys some uh, travel inspiration for when you're ready as well. Great, appreciate that Jeff. Yeah, I know you uh, did really well. You were like our mama Jeff and uh, took took care of us uh, every step of the way. So we appreciate that. Uh, before we get started, I just I just wanted to comment that we, we do understand that not everybody's ready to travel yet. Um, so if you do have any questions regarding it, we would love to answer any of your questions in. So just post them in our chat function and uh, we'll do our best to answer them for you. So uh, I thought during our trip, uh, our tour of Eastern Europe, uh, we visited three countries. So we're going to touch on um, each country. So I'll start today. Um, our first stop was Budapest, Hungary. So the thing I thought that was really neat about Budapest, Jeff, is when we got there, it, it's what we were told it wasn't Budapest. It was Buda and Pest. It was like two different cities where Buda castles on one side, Pest is on the other, and you know, right down the middle of the Danube. And so it was they're both great cities to explore on foot. Um, I know while we were there, we got to go down down into the catacombs where they had wine and and all sorts of all sorts of things, and got to try the wine while you were there. While we were there, um, what about you, Jeff? What did you uh, like about Budapest? Actually, to me, it was the most uh, pleasant surprise. You know, it was a great way to kick off the itinerary. Everyone was you know bragging about Prague, of course, where we ended up. Uh, but uh, no, to me, the most pleasant surprise was actually Budapest, as you mentioned. So yeah, the mm -hmm. Pest side is where our hotel was. Great walking distance to, you know, shops and restaurants and nightlife. And I'm glad you mentioned that folklore dinner because that's something we always try to include in our itineraries is some type of cultural evening, um, you know, at an authentic uh, restaurant. You can see a picture of me there. Uh, yes, I, I got that up, you, Jeff. <laughs> That was one of mine I got. <laughs> yes, the paparazzi caught me uh, participating. So yeah, it was a fun evening with wine and dinner. Of course, as you can see, there was musicians and dancers. And uh, yeah, they called me on stage to participate. And uh, it was just a fun evening. Now, the, the other thing I'll just mention, since we're talking about dinners, uh, I'm sure you agree. I found it very affordable in Budapest. Uh, when it comes to, you know, eating out for lunch and dinner uh, compared to some of the, the places we ended up visiting later. Um, yeah. the, the one last thing I'll just add to uh, is the Turkish style baths. Uh, so they're thermal baths, uh, which are very popular in Budapest. And I even remember one lady from our group uh, was showing she took some selfies. She went one morning uh, and was sitting out on the roof, I think, in like a, a hot tub style uh, type bath. And yeah. She had these amazing selfies with the skyline in the background um, and, and the Danube River. Uh, so just, uh, yeah, a great way to kick off the and start the trip with Budapest. Uh, uh, I was pleasantly surprised. 
Yeah, the Hungarian people really love that health uh, of the of the the baths, like like you say, they they really were enjoying that. So yeah. definitely, that was that was one of our highlights. Uh, so next we went to Vienna, and uh, for me, what stood out with Vienna, obviously, is just the quality of living. First of all, uh, I think it's been like ten years in a row. Vienna's been voted, uh, you know, the most livable city, <laughs> and. Mm -hmm. it, just to give a people an idea, their tap water comes from the Alps. So uh, again, very clean, very beautiful city. Um, another thing I think which caught people by surprise on our tour, uh, if you remember from the city tour, our tour guide said uh, Vienna is actually four times the size of Paris, if you don't count the outskirts, um, but of course way less people. So. Uh, very surprising and, and when you get there you know it, you certainly can see that so I'm not sure what stood out for you with Vienna but uh, it was uh, obviously another beautiful city of course. Yeah I mean when you go to Vienna I mean what's better than sitting down and uh, wa watching a classical music you know your classical music right there I mean we're sitting there and you see Mozart music we got dressed up and we sat down and enjoyed a night a night at the, at the theater and I mean we they have a, there's a large group of us so they have the theater they have opera houses there and and everything is beautifully done and you get to enjoy exactly what it looks like there. Uh, they also, Heroes Square, I was a big fan of with some of the beautiful carvings, things like that I, I enjoyed immensely. Yeah, the architecture is amazing and uh, obviously as you touched on, uh, Vienna very well known for the opera, the theater, uh, again that classical concert, uh, we all got dressed up, such a fun evening, we had a nice dinner and got to enjoy you know traditional uh, Mozart, Beethoven uh, music and uh, one thing as well I'll just mention what we try to also incorporate on our itineraries even if you're on a one of our guided kind of escorted tours uh, we always want to make sure you guys have some free time to explore on your own as well. So it's nice to do some activities as a group, um, mm -hmm. some dinners as a group, but we realize people have different tastes and you know different uh, hobbies and things like that. So uh, not everyone wants to see and do the same thing always. So one thing I, I remember we got some free time in Vienna and uh, I can't remember what you got up to, but I know I went with a group of a uh, small group of people and we went to the giant Ferris wheel that's right in the middle of Vienna and I remember going up and getting these amazing you know panoramic views of the city it's uh, it's so surreal to see it right in the middle of the city and uh, is it was actually at the entrance of an outdoor style amusement park uh, it wasn't too busy because we were there in October uh, but some of the rides were still open and I remember doing that and uh, obviously we found a great uh, spot for lunch and uh, uh, again, just a, a great uh, afternoon to explore on our own and really, uh, you know, find what uh, what you want to see yourself and do. Well, Jeff, while well, you got up to being a big kid and ri ride the amusement park, um, I took the romantic route and I did a, a beautiful carriage ride around Vienna and uh, it was misting a little bit. We had our blanket. Um, Next time, I hope my significant others along with me, but uh, three other agents came along and uh, yeah, we enjoyed uh, doing the whole experience on a carriage ride. I mean, who's Vienna on a carriage ride? That is the ultimate, the ultimate trip. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we had to throw in some shopping afterwards. That so, does sound romantic. I wasn't there with yeah. a significant other, or, but I, I, it sounds like I missed out on the carriage ride. Uh, like I, I love that. <laughs> Once in a lifetime experience for sure. And um, one thing too, I, I guess we should talk about is our day trip to Salzburg. Um, again, uh, this was something I always highly recommend. If you're in Vienna for a couple days, uh, take the day trip to, to Salzburg. Um, we, it was about a three hour motor coach ride because we stopped, uh, I remember, and took some pictures at a great lookout point with you know the lakes and the mountains in the background. <clears throat> but it's just a, such a unique contrast from the big city feel of Vienna uh, to this small town feel of Salzburg. I think there's only like 150,000 people there. But if you're a fan of the sound of music, which I remember some people in our group were dancing yeah. and prancing through the gardens. Um, and actually, Salzburg is the 
birthplace of Mozart. He moved to Vienna at a later age, but uh, uh, anything uh, you want to add on for Salzburg? Well, the, like you say, the, the hills were definitely alive with the sound of music there in, v in uh, sorry, Salzburg. Uh, we are definitely skipping, uh, some people were skipping through the arbor where uh, Maria and the Von Trapps uh, skipped through. Um, but what I thought was really interesting when we were in Salzburg is uh, the, I guess it's the Lover's Lock Bridge. So there was a bridge we went down and it had locks uh, on along the whole bridge and what lovers do would put a lock on and then they would toss their key into the river and that would sort of uh, signify their 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 love forever. And I think Jeff and I forgot about it. You mentioned that they would put their initials as well on that. Yeah, I think I saw a lot of the locks had uh, obviously the couple's initials. Uh, uh, with a with a marker, some type of uh, engraving on there, and then uh, yeah, as you mentioned, through the keys. So all these locks were lined on the bridge. Pretty neat uh, uh, to see that, and obviously uh, a fun uh, experience for many tourists that uh, happened across uh, that bridge there. Well, could you imagine uh, finding out your grandparents proposed there and going searching for their lock and uh, finding their initials there somewhere? Um, and I think we spoke to the tourist uh, tourist guide who was showing us around because one of our questions was what's happening to all those keys that are in the river and uh, I think once a year they they scrape those out to uh, make room for the for the next lot of keys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, so I think um, right now we're going to we're going to take a moment and uh, ask Shannon. Uh, Shannon, are there any questions right now from our viewers? Thanks, Deb and Jeff. Um, you're making me jealous for sure. I haven't had the opportunity to get to uh, Eastern Europe yet. So um, but I do have some questions to start us off with. Um, the first one I have here is I'm going to put to you, Deb. Um, what's someone asked? What's the best time of year to go to those areas? You know, Shannon, I think it really depends. I mean, you can go if you're going to, you know, if you want to see the market, the Christmas markets, you're going to go more in November to January. If you want to be really quite warm and walking around, you know, you're going to hit the summertime. But I think, I mean, mm -hmm. we were there in October and yes. it was, we just, you know, were a few layers. There was a little bit of misting, I think, in Vienna. But other than that, Everything was an amazing time. Yeah, yeah for I'll sure. Touch on that uh, just to add as well. Uh, really, the, the amazing thing about these destinations, you can go year round, uh, and we do see that. I'm glad you mentioned the Christmas markets. Um, very popular time to, to go for many people, uh, especially on a river cruise. Um, spring and you know fall will be a little bit you know in terms of price wise uh, affordable compared to summer, which is kind of the peak European travel season. <laughs> Um, but uh, a couple of things I'll mention just because I mentioned river cruise. Uh, there's a few different ways that you can visit these destinations. So river cruise is one very popular. Um, if you don't have the, you know, the budget set aside for that, uh, you could do maybe a, a guided tour similar to sort of uh, the concept we did. Um, now, the other thing we can also do is a customized itinerary. So we still make sure all the main components are taken care of. But if you sit down with Deborah or any of the team at Sell Up Vacations uh, and really tell them, I want to stay here for a couple nights, I want to go here for a couple nights, uh, they can get in touch with our travel designers and we can piece together and tailor create an itinerary specifically for what you're looking for. So um, again, the flights, the hotel, we can add a uh, rail or you know motor coach transportation in between the cities. If you want to add in some of these folklore dinners or, you know, a, a city tour, any of the day trips, um, we can pre-plan and include as much as you want and also leave aside some of that free time. So uh, really create a perfect itinerary for you. Yeah, exactly. you're right, Jeff. Yeah, there's a tons of options. Yeah, so whatever you want to do, you can certainly have that opportunity to uh, to contact us and we can certainly set you up with whatever uh, you're looking for specifically and tailor it to your needs. Um, thank you so much for answering that. I do have a couple more here. I'll move on. Um, one here, and this is quite popular with all of our presentations. Um, I think Deb, you, Deborah, you can um, certainly address this one. Someone asked, can we go now or is, it or is COVID uh, restricting people from traveling there? Well, like like everything right now, COVID is restricting you know things right now. But that's mm -hmm. that's the good thing about 
going with a travel agent and you know not just booking something yourself online i mean my job in my 20 year experience is you know all the way up to two weeks we want to put down you know that's when we check and see if there is anything COVID related. Do you need a, a test? Do you not do you, mm -hmm. some things need a visa? You know, that's, yes. you know, so that you have, it is a no hassle thing. So that's where yeah. our and my expertise come into play. Yes, absolutely. For sure. Um, uh, Deb will certainly help you out there anytime uh, you're looking for uh, any guidance at all in terms of any of that. Um, and one last question before we continue with the presentation for now. Um, someone asked, is it expensive to see a concert in Vienna? Now, I'm not sure which one of you would be best to answer that, but certainly feel free to um, to pop up with the, what, what you think uh, the answer to that would be. I, I'm not sure personally. I, so. I could chime in. Um, I don't have the price point in front of me, but uh, Mm -hmm. These are some of the things that we obviously like to try and pre-book in advance. So everything is paid up front in Canadian dollars. If you get to the destination and you know, you're paying in local currency, uh, it can be probably a little bit more expensive. So off the top of my head, I, you know, I don't even want a ballpark, but um, it was included in the package price of the tour and itinerary that we did. So uh, again, the, it's nice not having to reach into your pocket and uh, uh, you know spend uh, uh, when you have some of these things prearranged. And obviously, you know, we were just talking about COVID. Uh, I'm sure some of these you know excursions are gonna be monitoring the, you know the, mm -hmm. the size of the groups that are allowed and how many yeah. people that uh, at, that they're allowing. So again, that's probably one of the things you would want to look at pre-booking instead of just arriving there and. You might be disappointed if, if it's yeah. booked out or so, uh, sold out, sorry, you're booked up. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, Jeff, and I'm just going to add that it, whichever destination and you want something specific, it's, it is nice to pre have as well as it, it saves you from waiting in line. You're already, you're yeah. already set to go. So you don't have to wait in line and buy your tickets, which is, which takes so much time away from your, your trip as well. Yeah. Just one last thing to stress about, right? It's just exactly. pre any, anything that's pre-planned. It's uh, it's mm -hmm. just certainly the way to go in my in my mind for sure. All right, guys. So I will continue with the presentation. Um, I'll come back in a little bit to answer any other questions that come up. And I'm certainly encouraging you to enter any questions in there in the chat. We'd love to answer them for you. So don't be shy. Well. Okay, so I'm going to say I, we save the best for last to talk about and I think I, I was glad that this was our last uh, our last place to visit as well. Our last was Prague and overall it was my favorite city of this entire trip. Um, I am a bit of a geek when it comes to architecture and cathedrals and all that sort of things. So this had everything bridges, stained glass, windows in the cathedrals. It was it was the most amazing place I've ever seen. Uh, Jeff, what about what about you? What did you think of Prague? Yeah, it's funny that you mentioned that because when I was telling people I was doing this uh, itinerary before I went, uh, the people that have been uh, to Prague, they said, oh, you're going to love it. It's such an amazing city. It's definitely going to be the highlight. So I had some pretty high expectations and, you know, I think it still exceeded those expectations. Yes. Yes, <laughs> it's such an uh, amazing city, as you mentioned, it really a great mixture of everything, you know, the Charles Bridge, you know, the the Prague Castle, walking around the cobblestone streets. Um, one thing, too, that I, I really enjoyed, we did a dinner cruise one night. Um, so for those that did, you know, aren't able to do a river cruise, this is still an evening where you can get out onto one of these ships and actually do a small sailing uh, up and down the river. Uh, we even went through the locks, if you remember. And uh, so you have your meal uh, inside, there's a bar inside, and then we all went out onto the top deck. And I remember it being you know, lit up with all the city lights and uh, we're out on, on the deck in the evening, just to, in the middle, in the heart of the city, um, everything surrounding us and just a mesmerizing experience. And, the, the other thing too, I, I, I really noticed, as you mentioned, we went in October, um, so it was a bit chilly, but nothing, you know, too crazy. Um, but there were still, you know, a ton of locals uh, out and about, you know, checking out the markets, the shops, um, sitting on those uh, uh, cafe patios, uh, sipping hot wine, eating pastries. So it was a lively, vibrant city. Um, 
even though it's not plus 30 in October, there was still so much going on and and uh, I really enjoyed the, you know, the the inviting and exhilarating kind of uh, feel just sitting there and taking everything in. Yeah, no, I agree. I loved it. And I remember going down the locks and I remember we didn't even expect to. And I remember we were all kind of looking when we were inside watching us drop through the different watching us drop through the different locks. And we were like, oh, wow, I'm going up and down. So that was a that was a great time that we had there. But um, when I was in Prague, my uh, one thing that stuck out to me the most and it was the medieval dinner that we did and I thought that was so much fun. I mean, I've been to medieval times and you know, it's seen the jousting and the knights and all that. Well, no, you, this is not that at all and I had no idea. So yeah, this is a bohemian uh, medieval dinner. So the first thing that comes out with your food is the, the tarot card reader and uh, the beautiful women dancing with snakes and and balancing swords on their heads and uh, uh, the gentleman flicking fire in the air and then all the uh, the, the shooting. And so um, that was one of the, the main highlights for me was the, bo the Bohemian uh, medieval dinner. Yeah, that was such a unique experience. As you said, I've been to medieval times too, so I'm thinking the same kind of <laughs> concept and uh, it was so unique. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned Bohemian because um, that is sort of a, a you know, a, I guess a theme. We we met, went to that other Bohemian uh, town, Chesky Krumlov, uh, which was very uh, unique as well and uh, a quaint little town and uh, kind of had that same Bohemian feel. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the highlights, of course, for me uh, was on the way there, we stopped at the original Budweiser factory. Yes. So this is where Budweiser actually started. You can Google this and look it up uh, before it got over to uh, North America and the USA. So it started in this town in the Czech Republic. Um, they're actually the beer drinking capital of the world. Uh, some very strong beers there, but uh, we Canada took a tour. Didn't Canada didn't win? <laughs> <laughs> uh, surprisingly, right? <laughs> but yeah, we took a tour, got to sample some beer. I know uh, a lot of people picked up uh, some souvenirs and took some stuff home. And so, yeah, that was a highlight for me uh, visiting the, the factory, of course. <laughs> yeah, I had no idea that the same thing as that to the Budweiser factory was there too. So, yeah, we got to definitely taste some beer and, uh, and enjoy that. But uh so for me, yeah, I uh, I have nothing bad to say about Prague. It was just an amazing uh, trip for me, all in all. Um, but let's switch gears a little bit and uh, let's talk about about shopping. Um, I know when you're in that area, uh, my favorite, some of the favorite things I got was uh, hand blown Christmas ornaments and uh, hand painted by locals, things like that. Uh, they also had different kinds of cheeses and chocolates and and candies and they're all good for great gifts and uh, some of them may or may not have made it home in my bags uh, without were promised to friends uh, because they were too good so what about <laughs> what about you Jeff what did you yeah think? I noticed uh, a bunch of the the ladies were definitely picking up the ornaments <laughs> the, the chocolate the sweets uh, Again, I don't know how much made it home, but uh, I did a little bit of uh, shopping myself, you know, souvenirs. Uh, uh, and again, just going back to Budapest, uh, because, you know, in terms of value and affordability, uh, there are some great markets and shops in Budapest as well. So that's where I kind of did a bit of shopping, Budapest, and then in, in Prague as well. Uh, we, we were a little busier in Vienna and stuff, but uh, yeah, I, I guess just I'm curious, if there's, you know, given the opportunity, is there anything you would do differently if you if you went back or got to do this uh, itinerary again? Well, if, you know, of course, I'd love to stay longer everywhere. Um, mainly, you know, I, I'd love to stay a little bit longer in Salzburg. We did do that day trip and I would have loved to see actually the Sound of Music right there uh, that they put on a show. So that's definitely one of the ones thing I would do. Um, my next trip, I what I imagine is doing um, the river cruise down the Danube and stopping in all those cities and doing the Christmas markets on my on my way. Uh, the great thing about the Christmas markets is what I, I want to do is they're not like a regular market or a craft craft fair. They you know these are you can't just rent a table for ten dollars and sell your wares. This is, you know, five generations of Christmas table 
handed down from household, you know, to people in their generation. They've been taught how to make cuckoo clocks and chocolates through their family heritage. So I, I think that's definitely something, you know, I definitely want to go back and see because it's you know, that's on should be on everybody's bucket list. It's uh, funny you say that. Obviously, we're coming into the Christmas season and now you got me dreaming of, of visiting these markets. I wish uh, we were there right now. Um, you know, you mentioned st uh, longer, uh, staying longer. And one of the things actually we get some requests for, um, you know, whether you do two or three of the cities that we did, uh, some actually do even an extension to Poland at the end of it. So I personally haven't been yet, but uh, I've heard great things about Krakow, Warsaw. Uh, so we can do a, a Poland extension. And uh, uh, the other thing I'll mention, um, we also get some requests, uh, not in the same itinerary, but uh, we get people that want to see Bulgaria, Romania, actually, as well. Uh, so Romania, of course, following in, in Dracula's footsteps. Bulgaria, uh, you know, is a hidden gem, actually. Um, you can do some touring, and then they have some beautiful Black Sea beach days. So again, if you were to look up some of these resorts, they're amazing. A lot of people don't know these type of resorts exist. Um, but yeah, in Bulgaria, um, take a look at some of the beautiful, you know, Black Sea beach days that we have as well. So some people combine both countries or you can, you know, choose one of them. But uh, just touching on some other Eastern Europe uh, areas that we do sell with Exotic Journeys. Transylvania, that'd be fun to do in October, right around <laughs> Halloween time. I bet you have some promos around that time, eh? Yeah, <laughs> So that, sure. that would be that would be a little bit scary, actually. Um, <laughs> Shannon, do we have any uh, questions right now? We do, Deborah. Um, uh, so the next one here um, is someone asked, which river do you cruise on to see this area? I think you kind of mentioned that actually since this question was posted, but just wanted to put it out there just in case they missed it. Yeah, that's the Danube River. I mean, there's several in Europe of different rivers you can go down, but yeah. for this area is uh, the Danube. Yeah, perfect. Excellent. Thanks so much, Deb. Um, the next question here, and I think both of you can probably elaborate on this, but someone asked, did you feel safe in Prague? I know me, I personally did. I mean, all of Europe has, you know, and all countries have like, you know, petty sort of things, but I definitely felt safe walking around. Uh, what about you, Jeff? Yeah, me as well. Um, you know, Sometimes I even went on myself just because, uh, you know, I, as the tour leader, I wanted to kind of give people their own space as well. So a lot of times I was just venturing off on my own and I never felt, uh, you know, anything. Yeah. Obviously, you got to take the necessary precautions when traveling and just be careful. Everyone's got, you know, some pickpocketers and stuff like that. But no, everyone was friendly in the stores, um, you know, at the restaurants. Uh, so I, I definitely felt safe. And uh, even though yeah. it is a busy city um there wasn't a moment where i i felt that i was in danger and we were within walking distance to the old town so we could just walk right out the front door of our hotel and into these markets and uh, right into the middle of the square and prague castle where all the action was going on and in right. that area there was no vehicles so yeah we just right. you know just walked around very true yeah very easy walkable city as you mentioned in the old town no vehicles so uh, that that was uh, really great to, to be able to just walk through these cobblestone streets and check out all the shops. They had a lot of, I don't know if you remember too, a lot of um, street performers uh, that, yes. uh, that were uh, entertaining uh, as well in the middle of the square. <laughs> yeah, I definitely saw a lot of uh, street, for, street performers there as well. Oh, that sounds like so much fun. Anything, do we have any other questions, Shannon? Yeah, we do have a couple more, um, two more, I believe. Um, and if anybody has any more, pop them in the chat right now. I'm, we should be able to get to them. Um, if not, uh, I'll get to these ones right now. Um, someone mentioned, um, and Deb, I think I'll get you to address this one, is which cruise line is best in terms of river cruise? Do you have an opinion on that? My honest opinion is the the best cruise line is the best one for you. And the yes. only way of knowing that is calling myself, you know, an expert at it and seeing what you need. I mean, mm -hmm. some people want to do a wine, do a wine tour. Some people want yeah. a culinary tour on their cruise. Some people just want to relax. Some people want bikes included. So there's so many different. So it, it really is the best one for you. And that's what we I can help you with. 
Okay, that's excellent. Thanks so much, Deb. And Deb, just to, to give a quick plug to Deb, Deb, she's uh, can be contacted uh, at Victoria at selloffvacations.com, which is also in the chat there. So certainly feel free to pop her an email anytime. She certainly wa wants to help you out um, and make ev everything um, kind of suit your needs for sure. Um, and the last question I have here for the, today would be um, someone asked, how was the food on your trip? Jeff, why don't you go ahead and go first? I mean, I know how I felt about the food. <laughs> yeah, actually, <laughs> you probably want me to go first because you know I was a picky eater. <laughs> and I absolutely <laughs> love the food there. For me, I'm a meat and potatoes guy. Nothing too fancy yet. You know, obviously through my travels, I've been you know, broadening my horizons. But yeah, a lot of um, German uh, influence. So, um, you know, really they have... Uh, a mix of everything from you know your bratwurst your schnitzel your sausage but you can get a mcdonald's hamburger if you want as well yeah. there was a hard rock cafe there we try yeah. to kind of enjoy the local cuisine mm -hmm. um so the you know the goulash and uh yeah the the schnitzel as i mentioned um i remember those pastries that we talked about that were uh, the wrapped on the, yeah. yes uh, that was uh very uh, enjoyable the the bratwurst so uh, no, the food to me was was very uh, enjoyable, and they have everything from you know French fries, you know, and, and hamburgers as I mentioned, to the more authentic. So you'll always find something that you'll be able to enjoy. Yeah, and I remember like when we did more of the the dinners ourselves. It was you. They put down meat. There's there's a big tray of meat. It, it was very. You, if you're a carnivore, th this is this is your go-to place because there's definitely a lot of different sorts of prepared meats. Uh, and I also remember in uh, Vienna, you know, after you know a night out, we you know we you stop at a hot dog stand. It's not like you know you're getting a European wiener. It's the you know the Vienna sausage in a bun, mm. and oh, those were amazing. Yes, oh I remember we had a late night where we enjoyed those. Yes, <laughs> yes, they were delicious, weren't they? <laughs> I'll also just chime in quickly too. Um, usually, all the hotels that we use include um, daily uh, European, uh, or I should say, American breakfast because it really was a full buffet, mm -hmm. and they have such an amazing selection of fresh bread and meats and cheeses and fruits and uh, pastries. Um, so breakfast actually was probably one of my favorite meals. And then uh, some of the times, depending where we went, um, like you said, we would have a set sort of platter or something just because we were a group. But a lot of times we still had a menu where you might be able to pick and choose what you want. And um, yeah. so, yeah, it, it was definitely enjoyable in terms of the cuisine. Oh, exactly, exactly. S sounds like there's no complaints on the food. There. <laughs> no, <laughs> My no you, didn't go, you didn't go hungry, that's for sure. You did a lot of walking, thankfully, to, to walk off all that meat. <laughs> that's true, yeah, that's sure. true. The walking came in handy for that. Yeah, that's awesome. I, we did have one other question come in here while you guys were speaking, so we'll we'll address that and then we'll finish things up. Um, the question is, is this part of Europe currently open to Canadian visitors? Deb, are you able to answer that? Currently, not at this time, just mm -hmm. because of what's going on. Um, but yes. uh, no, yeah, so okay. we are keeping up to date, but no, not at this moment. Okay, perfect, perfect. And uh, Deb and Jeff, did you guys have anything else to add before we uh, end end for today? Yeah, maybe I'll chime in first and then uh, let you end yeah. it off, Deb. Sure. <laughs> for me, I just want to mention, of course, we've been talking about Eastern Europe, um, but again, our, our name is Exotic Journey, so we do you know, every continent actually. So um, just in terms of other places in Europe, one of the things that's very successful for us um, has been our long stay packages. So you may have heard about these where you go for your, you know, three weeks, get your condo in Portugal, in Spain, French Riviera, Malta. Um, so we do uh, uh, very successful long stays. We also do self-drive itineraries. So for those that don't want to travel as a big group and have a, you know, a regimented itinerary, this gives you kind of that um, ability to go at your own pace, uh, which is popular in like UK and Ireland and Iceland. Um, obviously, you know, I know many people as well dream of those overwater bungalows in Tahiti and Bora Bora. Um, so we do sell those. We actually have, uh, I should have mentioned as well, long stay packages in the Cook Islands. So um, 19, 26 night packages in your bungalow in the Cook Islands. We can do an African safari if you want to hop around, you know, Asia, South America. So 
again, obviously we're uh, hoping for the world to slowly open up uh, sooner than later. And once you're ready, um, you know, we'll mm -hmm. be here to, to assist with any of your requests. And actually, I should also mention because this year we've expanded our Canada product quite significantly as well. So we have some long stays in Victoria, in Kelowna. Uh, we do some unique ski packages. We do some tours. Um, you know, to Churchill, the Northern Lights. Uh, so if you're looking to stay within our, you know, our own backyard in Canada this year, we can help you with that as well. So just a big thank you again to, to Deborah, to all the team at Sell Off Vacations. Thanks for having me. It was great to reminisce about a lot of these memories. And <laughs> It was. Uh, yeah. Yes. And, uh, you know, just excited to be here. So uh, Merry Christmas and thank thanks again. <laughs> well, J Jeff, I just want to reach out and say thank you one more time for being such a good, a good person to take us on this trip, being our mom, mm -hmm. take, making sure we were there on time and where we needed to be. Um, Merry Christmas to you and your family, Jeff, and thank you uh, in every way for uh, for being with us and and Merry Christmas to to everybody, all your our viewers today. Excellent. Thank you, uh, Jeff and, and Deborah. You've uh, given us lots of information and lots to think about for our uh, planning for uh, Eastern Europe in the future. Um, so I just wanted to finish things off so just to say thank you to everyone. Um, thank you to the, all of our viewers for joining us today. Um, if you have posted a question and we didn't get it answered, um, myself and Pam will be on the chat function for about 10 minutes after the presentation to answer those questions. Um, and you're more than welcome to call Salifications today as well. The phone lines are open till 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, you can reach one of our agents at 1-877-735-5633. You can also contact our Salifications expert agent that we had on today, Deborah Dezang from our Victoria store. Uh, her email is uh, victoria at selloffvacations.com, which is also posted in the chat. Um, today's presentation will be posted on our YouTube channel, which is My Sell Off Vacations. Um, feel free to subscribe so you can get a notification when we post new videos. Uh, on our channel, you uh, can also view any past presentations we, we've done, um, as well as the latest resorts and airline COVID safety videos, which um, has lots of great information. Um, and with the holidays coming up, uh, we will not be hosting a presentation next Wednesday, um, but when we we will be returning the following Wednesday, December 30th, um, and our expert agent Denise Mulligan will be on to tell us all about her own personal trip to Mexico uh, that she took in November. Uh, we hope you will join us again, and I just wanted to say thank you, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and uh, bye bye for now. Thanks again, Deb and, and Jeff. Thanks, Shannon. Merry Christmas. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye.